Good afternoon and welcome everyone to CRC Music in the studio. We're so glad that you could join us this afternoon. Thank you to those who have joined us before previous events and thank you to those who are joining us for the first time if this is your first CRC event, um, CRC Music event. It's a really, really great thing that we've started to put together here. We've really been enjoying it as faculty members and as students, of course. It's our opportunity to showcase professionals in the industry doing their thing and our students here on campus uh, who are making music and doing what they can in this virtual environment. And um, my name is Max Kiesner. I'm a professor of instrumental music here at CRC, and I'm really excited to bring to the stage today a special guest artist who's a singer and songwriter from Philadelphia. His name is Alexi Parasco. So would you please join me in welcoming Alexi to the stage? Hi, Alexi, how are you? Hello, hello, I'm doing well. How are you, how are you doing, Matt? I'm doing okay, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I, I know you got a busy schedule performing and teaching and that kind of thing. So thank you for taking the time. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here. And, and yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, so for the people who don't know much about you, you might want to start by saying, uh, you know, a little bit about what you do, who you are, how would you characterize yourself as a musician? Yes, uh, I'm a, an R&B and pop artist in Philadelphia. I'm originally from the Boston area, but I've been in Philly the last six years. And um, yeah, independent artist and songwriter and singer, you know, I, I do a little bit of all, all those things. And I guess I would kind of leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> we wear many hats in this industry, right? Is this something that you've kind of come to over um, a number of years or something you've always done? Have you always done the same thing or have you kind of added different disciplines to your um, professional repertoire, so to speak? Um, oh, no. I mean, I think like you're saying, uh, like, or like you said, you know, you wear many different hats. So, you know, I've, I've worn a few different musical hats. So, you know, I, I play keys, I play the guitar and I sing and I've, that's kind of what I've always done. And I write songs, obviously, using all those tools. But then, you know, since being an independent artist for the last 12 years, I've also added a bunch of non-musical skills like Photoshop and, you know, <laughs> calling people you know like all those kinds of you know booking <laughs> you, have to be, you have to be a booking you're your own booking person you know your own manager your own PR person so you know yes a bunch of other non-musical things as well a hundred percent I really uh I like that you said that uh, your photoshop skills are on point by the way if anyone has seen his uh his 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 media out there online it's uh it's great um mm -hmm. and calling people too that's one of those skills <laughs> that we really need to teach our students right so students right. out there listening make sure you get your your contacts in order <laughs> that's really good um well i think we should give the audience a little bit of a, a taste of what you do and maybe start with one of the the latest singles that was released or is it the latest single am i am i saying that correctly or no uh, is, it, it was the one of the first singles off the most recent project okay. yeah okay great um and so we're listening to a piece that um has a few features on it. This is called Love Odyssey, and it features Jadakiss and T3 and Mission. Am I saying that right? Or Mason. Um, Mason, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first two I'm very familiar with. Jadakiss is a legend. T3, legendary musicians um, in the hip hop industry. They've been around for forever. Like, how did this happen? How did you get these folks to collaborate? Uh, well, I guess the, the short long story or the long story made short is um I was getting married so I got married during the pandemic last year last July and uh I was working I put out a project in 2018 and you know because I was getting married I was like all right you know I told my producer Tony Moore who's out of the Breed Studios here in Philadelphia I said you know this can't be like any other project I've done we need to go all out swing for the fences and so it was really through him that he he kind of put started to put the word out when when he knew that we were going for something big and just kind of a few out of the blue phone calls where I was going to, you know, Chipotle and coming out and I get a phone call and he says, hey, what about what do you think about Jada Kiss? And I was like, <laughs> Jada Kiss, you know, that kind of thing where it was like, you know, totally out of the blue and, 
you know, I just feel like I feel grateful that they felt so, heard something in the track that they wanted to be a part of and to sign on board with. So, mm. yeah, I think I think actually T3 was first and then Jadakiss really wanted to do a track with T3 and saw this opportunity to, to bring them together. And yeah, that's kind of how, how it happened. That's fantastic. All right, let's take a listen to Love Odyssey and talk a little bit after. <laughs> Chase the galaxy and holds a star of its own. Yeah. Uh. I face soldiers at war. Got the angel of death, blood painted over the door. Untainted, open, and pure was the love that I sought as I sailed to the isles with rust on my sword. The curse for my glory, trust in my story. One of an angel who had fallen for me. Straight out of heaven like she slipped through the gates A masterpiece on display that you wish you could take home oh, I'm on my odyssey back I teleport to her but there ain't that technology yet If I was rich instead of fish I'd probably jump it now I'm blurring with the current till I lay my eyes on these lips Yes, and lay a kiss that could make Aphrodite jealous This love song going much further than I can tell it I'm over overzealous, girl I'm super hyperzealous My yearning for a burning more I gotta fight the feeling Across the Adriatic a Virgo chase the galaxy and hold a star of its own, yeah. Across the Adriatic Sea, a Virgo chase the galaxy and hold a star of its own, yeah. It's like we dance in the B, we like the S in the V, I like to overachieve, I chose and I received, I like, I swear we in sync, I like a trouble some tea. that's right, it's definitely, definitely, love on this dream, I like to focus on goals, and I don't, don't hoes, I had to switch in my code, I mean it's always a go, I mean you never would know, but yes, it's levels we grow, I'm just a pessimist though, let me spell it out, any situations we be having, we can work it out, rent the constellation and we aced it cause we versatile, never try my patience when I'm trying to put these verses out so i'm super certain that it's worth it if we walked the aisle i was just a nigga who did have a vision did we can uh bend it and sweep the whole picture you the best and may i suggest it took a minute but we here now no moment of fear it's all fitting across the adriatic sea the virgo chase the galaxy and hold the star of its own yeah across the adriatic sea Chase the galaxy and hold. Star of the song. Yeah. Yo, I'ma roll, you pour the herb and liqueur. President, you sweet, do not disturb on the door. I be on suitable, uh -huh. convo beautiful. I'm just thinking in my mind what I wanna do to you. Yeah, playlists on the low tone, we both grown. Out of eye contact, no phone. What's that, that? I'm trying to get up in your mind more. Yes. When the chemistry is right, it's when you find more. Each other's what we're designed for. Mm. Yeah, we can have sex anytime, sure. sure. I'd rather do a little more building. Build. Hopefully, you feel the same way, Lord willing. Uh -huh. It's worth it. The energy is perfect. perfect. Start off slow and then you let it surface. One in ten, how you rate this thing? Give it a minute, let's see where we can take this thing. I'm oh, so the Adriatic Sea, the Virgo chase, the galaxy and home. The star of its own, yeah. Across the Adriatic Sea, the Virgo chase, the galaxy and home. The star of its own, yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. 
I remember hearing that for the first time. I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. It's so rich. Like there's so much Thank going you. on in that music. Um, amazing harmonies. Of course, you got the horns, man. So whenever you need a trumpet track, let me know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just for you, Max. <laughs> a little horn at the end. So how come Alexi didn't call me for this, man? Right, right. <laughs> no, incredible work. It's, it's, Thank you, man. All those verses are so solid. Great music video, beautiful singing, of course. And um, just, just amazed. Great stuff. And you, of course, you have a lot of comments rolling out here in the in the chat. If you're a fan, make sure to check out Alexi on his on his socials. He's got his handles there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your your upbringing. Mm -hmm. This is usually a logical place to start for most people, right? And we've known each other for virtually all of our lives. <laughs> and my earliest memories of you were coming down with like a guitar or something. I, and maybe not even with a guitar and like singing and doing impressions of like Elvis Presley or Michael Jackson and like, you know, folks like that. And it seemed to me like pretty obvious that you were a natural entertainer and that's what you were going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, did it always feel that way or was it just me? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think mm -hmm. you're, you're pretty right about that. You know, those are kind of some of my, you know, I'm a big believer in doing, you know, what you, what you choose to do for your life, you know, I think that there are seeds of that in your youth, like you're saying, you know, and so uh, when I reflect on that, and like, as I'm thinking about what I want to do, for, as I was thinking about what I want to do for a career, it's like, yeah, those are like <laughs> that, you know, doing my impersonations. And, um, but then also when I started playing the guitar when I was about 11, uh, or when I was seven, and then starting to write songs when I was 11, like music has always been that thing uh, for me. So it's like, yeah, this is what I'm going to keep doing as I get old. So did you, were you were enrolled in music programs in like middle school, high school and college and that kind of thing? Like what was your, what was your educational journey and relationship to music? Yeah. I mean, I was lucky. I had a real, a, a lot of really, just really great music programs at my school, you know, just kind of the public school education that I went to, you know, we just had good music teachers and um, people that, and really robust, you know, curricula and just opportunities to try a bunch of different, you know, choirs or um, di different musical things. So, you know, that was really great. You know, I started taking guitar lessons, like I said, when I was seven, um, I kind of just been singing, like I said, in school choirs my whole life and then started writing music at age 11 and then kind of just self-taught on the piano in, in high school. Um, but yeah, you know, not, nothing beyond that, nothing beyond kind of what, what my school was offering. That's interesting because, you know, a lot of people think, <clears throat> well, let's go a little bit further. What happened after high school? You went to, to um, undergrad or something and did you study music there or did you study something different? Yeah, I mean, I, I, went, I did go to undergrad. I went to Tufts University um, and I studied, my, my major was American Studies, but I took, I was pretty much two courses away from being a music major mm. and I was just stubborn and didn't want to take my last two music courses. Um, <laughs> but, and I would say it was helpful in some ways. Um, I can't say that as a professional independent artist, I'm really pulling on, you know, my principles of tonal theory, you know, <laughs> Beethoven uh, harmonic analysis in my day-to-day -day yeah. musical career. But, you know, I, um, I, I guess I would say probably the most, and I, I know you have some questions about this that you're gonna ask later, but I think the biggest way that my undergrad degree helped me in my professional music career is just having a degree and being able to get day job, you know, side jobs to sustain myself as a, as an artist. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is probably the, the biggest relationship between the two, you know, not necessarily content wise, but just, you know, from a purely um, in employment, you know, perspective, being able to land jobs that I otherwise wouldn't necessarily be able to without a degree. Yeah. From a practical standpoint, I mean, we could, yeah, we could work on that point really quickly because I think a lot of you know folks who come to us and they want to be music majors don't really know exactly what the path forward looks like for them 
And mm -hmm. sometimes the best advice that we give students is just to finish something. And it doesn't really matter exactly what it is, but that you finish it and you have some kind of credential that you can then take forward. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of says you can, you can contribute and then finish something, you know, which is a really important thing, right? To, to do in, in all of your lives, especially in, in creative endeavors, right? Because yeah. Yeah. you could very well have written all these songs and never released a record, right? Never have finished the product and put it out mm -hmm. into the world. But, you know, <laughs> that's, that doesn't make a successful person, right? A successful right. person is someone who can follow through and then, and then make their productivity something that benefits them, their creative productivity. Right. Um, and so this, this record that you have is kind of like, I mean, this is, is this like your third record or something now? Is that? Yeah, right? we'll count. I mean, we'll say two, second legit record. We got second, a few other okay. ones we don't need to mention. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a few warm up, a few warm up records. Warm up acts, yeah. Right, okay. right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. And so this was kind of uh, released in the past year, you said, during the pandemic and that kind of thing? Was yeah, we challenge? started working on it in 2018. And okay. then. Yeah, was, we're going to release it in 2020 and then pretty much took all 2020 to shoot all the music videos. And now we're putting it out three years later in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of delayed gratification, I suppose. Has that been a bit of a, a tough pill to swallow sometimes? Like having this thing that you're ready to release, but it's just not, you just can't yet. You know what I mean? Or you can't um, even tour on the record yet, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I should first say, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be in the position that, you know, I'm thankful for my health. It's been obviously a crazy year and a half, two years. Um, but I know that a lot of other folks have been dealing with it in, in much more serious ways. So, you know, I'm grateful for all that I have because I have all the, you know, the things that really matter, you know, I, I'm thankfully okay with. So, um, but yeah, we, I know we were like 2020. This is the year, man. This and you know, I, like I said, I was getting married. This was going to be a huge <laughs> year professionally and personally. And then, yeah. you know, all of it was just kind of, you know, yeah, we had to rework it. But on the plus side, like I said, we we were able to shoot music videos that I, I don't know that we otherwise would have because you know, Jada Kiss was just kind of hanging out, and yeah. we were like, hey, can we just come up to New York and, and make it happen? So turn into uh, a positive, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and the music videos look great. Let's check out another one, um, if it's all right. Um, can we check out Distract Me? Um, sure. Yeah. This is, uh, do you want to uh, prepare this one a little bit? It's got a feature spot on it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess I'll, the little pre-story to how the album came about, like I said, we started working on it 2018, and I basically took a whole month where I just wrote pretty much two songs a day. So I was mm. just kind of writing a verse and a chorus, and just trying to get out ideas. I think that's the best way to do it. Not Karen wrote some terrible, terrible things in there. And my producer whittled it down from about 100 to these 20. So this was one of them. Um, and it features one of R&B legends, Chrisette Michelle, again, which was just a kind of another out of the blue phone call. Yeah. And yeah, again, you know, we're just lucky that, that she heard something that she liked. She also wrote her own verse, which we weren't expecting. And um, yeah, it's about, um, being distracted by somebody that you love from all the craziness in the world. So kind of an inappropriate song for these times. Definitely. All right, here we go, distract me. You say to focus on you, focus on me. But how can I, when there's a flood and a fire at the same damn time raging right outside my door? Call my neighbor just to see if he's okay and if his power's out too. But I can't get no service. Walking around searching my phone out like, can you hear me now? Ooh. I'm looking out at the stars, thinking about living on Mars. I don't know if I trust this Elon Musk, but I will if he can bust me.
just can't look away from a crash in the other lane. But what I don't realize is that I'm the one on fire. So come take me for a walk. Come, 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 come take me away me. with a glass of shark. Another fantastic piece, man. Congratulations. Thank you. So it strikes me that there's a few themes like running through the music. I try to look for themes, you know, <clears throat> when I'm doing stuff like this and just in general, just help me understand it. And it seems like, of course, there's one theme. There's There seems to be a lot of love songs. And so I'm curious about what your take on the love song is and <laughs> and like what it, what what you're kind of learning in producing so many love songs, right? This, this whole thing is about the love odyssey and, right. and that kind of thing. And, and maybe there's something new you can reveal to us there. Um, and then the other thing kind of relates back to something that you um, uh, had mentioned about your background in American studies and, and dealing with some of the contemporary issues that we face in society, but with a real sense of humor. And that's the other thing I see running through your music, which is, you know, the, there's just a lot of, love and humor and joy and that kind of thing so i i just want to talk to you about those things really quick <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. unpack that yeah um yeah do you have a specific you mean just love songs in let's general? talk about the love song topic first yeah I'm yeah, yeah. About okay that. Yeah. um yeah i mean i don't uh, well i guess like i said the uh, when we were writing i don't always just write love song you know it's not just what i do but um, you know, I had met my now wife and I was just kind of in that mode. And we realized when I had that list of kind of a hundred songs that we had, that I had come up with, you know, when we whittled it down to the top 20 or so, we realized, you know, the, the strongest ones were the love songs. We we're like, all right, this is going to be, you know, a love album, you know, and, and that's pretty much what it is. There are a few tracks that are a little more kind of about brotherly love or, you know, kind of that and that that's going to be one of the next singles that's coming out um around the holidays which is about you know loving each other as you know as a community um but for the most part it is you know romantic love just because that's kind of where i was at when i was writing all the songs yeah and now you're a new father and so that brings up a whole another aspect of love which is loving something <laughs> that is outside yourself and yes. does what it wants to do whether you like it or not right, right, right. <laughs> mostly love mostly love we'll say. Mostly, mostly love, love. Yeah. Right, 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 right. i'm curious to hear what the songs are going to be like in the next year yeah <laughs> yes i'm curious as well yes yes they'll be sleep deprived is what they will be I'm yeah sure. yes we'll try to get him i mean he's five months so we are you know a little i, I suppose a little premature for the voice lessons but we're uh, <laughs> you know we'll we're, we'll ease him into it <laughs> that's great yeah yeah great. yeah 
Um, so I, I suppose this is probably something that might be intentional. I don't know, but like you, you mentioned that you wrote like, you know, hundreds of songs and like you, t- you mm-hmm. tend to do this. And I think that is, um, a, a really good thing for people to put them through, like put themselves through it. And instead of stopping yourself from doing something because it's not going to be perfect, just do a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff that ends up being maybe 80% bad and 20% yeah. really, really good. Right. You just do it. Yeah. Um, you just make it happen. Um, it, there's probably a little bit of uh, maybe like purposeful choices that come through. And, and what I'm getting at is like, there's just these hilarious little lines in there. Like, I don't trust this Elon Musk, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Like, are, are these purposeful decisions? Like I'm going to throw a line in there. that's just going to throw like the romantic vibe off a little bit just to show everyone my sense of humor. Is that purposeful or does it just happen naturally? Um. I'm trying to remember how I wrote. I mean, uh, this song was a little different than my others. Like the form of it is different. If you pay attention to like the, you know, the chorus only happens one time, which is not normally how I write. So mm. the form was a little different. Even the timing of the verse, I was more, for this one, I was really just kind of going with the flow. I think it's an awkward, like 18 or 22 measure verse. It was just kind of the way things flowed. And mm. And yeah, I think Musk just kind of rhymed with trust. So I was like, yeah, I don't know if I trust Elon Musk. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how we got to distract me. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose in like the editing process, you know, when you're looking at all these songs and you're kind of refining your lyrics and stuff, it's like, you know, some of that stuff just stays because that's good. It's they're good decisions and it, right. it it's memorable, you know, but there's something else too. Like there's this um, short song that you have on a previous record called Caucasia Aliosis. And it's, it's, again, it has this really like intense sense of humor that you just like radiate, right? Mm -hmm. Just joy, love, humor, um, levity and that kind of thing. But it tackles a a pretty big subject that we've been dealing with in this country for a long time, which is just like Mm -hmm. race relations and that kind of thing. Um, How to be an ally, how to operate in um, communities of color appropriately and all of these different things and I wondered if you'd be able to talk about that before we play that piece yeah um you uh, I mean I think being a, a white person and especially a white artist that has been so influenced by R&B music which is you know historically as pretty much you know all of our music in, in America has been you know rooted in come from African-American people so you know I think that uh, the only way to do it honestly and with some type of integrity is to really acknowledge that and think about, you know, my place as a white person in this music. Where do I fall? How can I, uh, you know, contribute my part in a meaningful way? How can I acknowledge my pr- the privilege that I have? How can I work with other white people to have conversations that are difficult and maybe awkward, but, um, you know, not just surround myself with black people or people of color and say, oh, that's not, you know, that's not me or I don't benefit. Like I think a lot of, uh, for a lot of white artists that uh, are involved with predominantly black musical communities, that can be a trend that happens, you know, oh, that's not my problem. But, you know, as we saw last summer, yeah, you know, at at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm white and I need to figure out how I can yeah, leverage the privilege that I have to, to have some good come from it. So, you know, this, this song that you're about to play was one way of saying, um, you know, I took this idea that Toni Morrison had uh, in a talk that she gave. I just heard her talking with, I think, Charlie, I forget his last, but one of the main anchors. And uh, she brought up this idea about how uh, racism is a, is a disease and it's something that white people suffer from and so I remembered something like that and my producer had sent me this track and I was like I don't even know how I came up with the idea for the word but I was like what's it called you know caucasialiosis which is essentially diagnosing yeah it's a fictional thing obviously and just play playing around with the idea of racism and believing that one colored people is better than another colored you know group of people it's you know just playing around with that idea in a kind of playful um, way. And so that was kind of how we landed on Caucasialiosis. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, let's, let's take a listen to Caucasialiosis and uh, talk about it. The people who do this thing, who practice racism 
are bereft. There is something distorted about the psyche. It's like it's a profound neurosis. It feels crazy. It is crazy. What to call, to call, crazy aliosis. What to call, ooh, ooh. What to call, to call, crazy aliosis. What to call, ooh, ooh. Teachers writing mm-hmm. While Miss Nina plays the keys They cleared up my mind yeah. From this here disease Friday night's a speaker They call him Mr. Cox Who taught you to hate yourself? Send me and you We got, we got work to do I just like it You know, um, something about that kind of strikes me as as maybe it kind of obvious to us because the the two of us in having conversations previously in our lives about this thing, um, it, it seems self evident because we we are students of Black American music, right? And like if we take it seriously, we have to face those issues. But not everybody who operates in the realm of even music, mm-hmm. never mind other realms of being we'll have to face those kinds of questions like the history of racism in America. Like if you're a jazz musician, <laughs> that is something that you directly have to confront. It's not just scales and chords and learning tunes. You know what I mean? It's not, if you're going to be an R and B singer or a hip hop artist, like you're not just like studying the thing itself. You're studying the history and the tradition and the experiences that inform it, you know, because it's right. a crucial part of it. And uh, I like what you said about that in the first verse, you know, that these, these provide models that can kind of clear your head of this this way of thinking you know Mm -hmm. if you really respect someone like nina simone or whatever Mm -hmm. and you listen to their music and you listen to their message they can they can break your word worldview and expand it into something a little bit broader than it was before you know um just just great but again it and you have suggestions at the end too right the medication for the uh yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've been lucky, you know, at the end of the day, I've just been super lucky to have a lot of, you know, none of what you saw in the video, none of any line in there was any type of, you know, knowledge or any, any wisdom on my part. You know, I've just been lucky to have mentors and, you know, very patient teachers and people of color, primarily black people in my case, to work with me and, and believe in me to 
help do that. So, you know, that's why I believe it is my responsibility, whether it's with music or, you know, you might have, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the teaching that I do, but, you know, you know, um, I, since I'm an educator as well, you know, working, like I said, with, you know, to pass on that knowledge to other white people to have, you know, so that they don't make the same mistakes and, you know, don't come in, in across the same stumbling blocks that, that I have and do the same things that I have. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's really all it is. Yeah. So um, let's, let's speak of the teaching that you do at the moment. So it's, I, what I know is that maybe you've been a, a choir director, a musical director, uh, uh, in some capacities, a, a, a praise director or a musical director at churches and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you could speak about the kinds of ways in which you teach. Yeah, I mean, I've been lucky to uh, do all different kinds of musical things under the sun and work with all different kinds of all different age groups. So, you know, right now, one of the gigs I have is working with pre-K and little kindergarten kids doing, you know, little sitting in a circle saying twinkle, twinkle, little that kind of thing. Yeah. And so so that's one thing I've done, but I've also, you know, been a teacher, been a general music teacher at a high school, at a couple of different high schools, um, middle school. um, I've been doing, since moving to Philly, I've been doing an after school choir program for elementary school kids. I was assistant director of the Boston College Gospel Choir for a couple of years after graduating. Um, And then, yeah, like you said, I've been minister of music for a couple of different churches, you know, working on their praise team, praise and worship music. Um, and, you know, like we've spoken, you know, gospel music has been a big part of my influence as well. So, um, yeah, I say the only group I haven't worked with are elderly folks. That's the only, I'm just waiting to get a call to go into a <laughs> person's home and see what, what choir we can kind of pull together. You know, other than that, you know, I've worked with pretty much every other group and I've just been lucky that all the day jobs that I've, you know, quote unquote day jobs I've been able to have have all been able to be music related. So, yeah. you know, that's been a good you know, nice benefit to have. So what's interesting is that like, you know, historically speaking, we often find gigs happening in certain places. Like historically, they may have been at court, right? Of, you know, the Habsburgs or some wealthy family or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, royalty or something, but then also in churches, right? Those are like Mm -hmm. the primary, like employers of musicians throughout history. And like, it might be still true today that there are gigs to be found at church. And I think a lot of people don't see that, especially if they're not religious, you know what I mean? Like, how could I, how could I work in music at a church and not be a believer or not be faithful? That seems counterintuitive. Like, uh, so the first question is, are you like, do you belong to that congregation? Do do you follow some kind of religious Uh, doctrine or is it like kind of a day job? Like you're saying, I mean, I do. I mean, I, I identify as Christian. Um, like we were speaking the other day, I don't know that I, uh, you know, qualify as a very talented or good, good Christian, but I, you know, I, that's how I still identify. And, uh, you know, obviously to me, you know, faith, the, the label you put on it is, is not nearly as significant as what you do with it and how you live your life. So, um, that's kind of me personally. And then when it comes to the actual job, I do think it depends on the church because I do, I have come across some churches that are like, you need to believe, or you need to join the church. You you do need to follow X, Y, and Z. Mm. Um, And it also depends on the level, like to be the minister of music. I'm sure that's a different level of commitment than, you know, coming in to just be the bass player or something like that. Um, But all of that, I think depends on the congregation that you're a part of. And yeah, I mean, I've definitely known a whole wide range of, faiths um there are people that have have ascribed to different faiths that have all you know played in a church and haven't been completely fine because yeah. most churches that have been a part of recognize that it's about you know just being a good person being you know mm-hmm. down for whatever the church is about mm-hmm. yeah interesting i always find that to be kind of an interesting dynamic you know especially when i'm getting hired to play for you know other churches with other trumpet players who are definitely not believers and they're like you know they're like what am i doing in this place i feel like i should be burning up you know right, right, right. <laughs> Play, yeah, yeah. <laughs> playing this music but uh but anyway and there's historical accounts of that right the whole you know right <laughs> blasphemous musicians sitting in on yes 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 catholic service anyway um so that's part of your background right? and gospel music is like an integral part of vocal music especially in american 
uh, music. Mm. So we clearly hear that coming through in your in your records, but also I'm hearing Prince and Michael Jackson and mm -hmm. um, but especially a lot of Prince. I don't know. Is there something um, is there a specific focus on an artist or like a, a really strong influence that you have, especially in making this latest record? Uh, this latest record, yeah, we definitely wanted to go for a timeless Michael Jackson, like off the wall thriller thing. Mm -hmm. We're like, you're going all the way. Like, we want this music to, in the same way that you can listen to one of those tracks that came out 40 years ago and still have it, still dance to it, still feel like it's fresh today. Mm -hmm. That's what we wanted to do with Love Odyssey, which is the name of the album. Um, so, we definitely wanted that. And then I think my general approach to songwriting, like, yeah, it's very much, you know, I just love, um, yeah, both the ones you mentioned, Michael and Prince. I think my my approach to songs are, are very much in my, even my voice and vocal choices are along the Michael Jackson lines. And then, but yeah, the same thing, you know, with Prince as well, you know, I, to me, the, the big three that I always say are Stevie Wonder, Prince and, and Michael Jackson, you know, in terms of the legends and the icons that just created, you know, timeless, legendary music that I would, you know, love to do 5%, you know, something close to that. So that's, right. that, that's always the direction that I'm shooting for. Um, so there is a question in the Q&A that uh, reads something like this, and maybe this is about you know, you as a performer and in, in the process of creating records and, and that kind of thing, when you're coming to that stage of finalizing something and saying, yeah, this is going to be it, right? Because like most art, it's never truly finished. It's just as finished as much as you can stand mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. And even a little more tinkering will make it worse, you know, at some point, yeah. right? So the question is, how do you fire the critic in your head and just go ahead and do it? Just write a song or just record a song or just coalesce this collection of songs right. and create a record yeah i mean i was well i guess the first thing i would say is like you were saying before i forget what the percentage is that they say that's like 10 80 10 or something like that like 10 percent is going to be amazing 80 percent is going to be okay and then 10 percent is going to be garbage like that's that's much more what i am ascribing to when i'm approaching songwriting so that's why i like writing like that like all at once just a bunch of stuff because i know that it's it's not really about what i really like in the moment it's it's just the the goal is to just churn out so instead of making the goal like oh i need to write a really good song now the goal is instead i need to write a hundred top to bottom things hmm. whether they're songs whether it's a mess and I'll, let me tell you there were a lot of messes on that list that i came up with um, so there's that. And then I was talking to my friend earlier today about, um, I tend to not spend a lot of time on my songs. Like I go with my gut, like the, when I sit down to write, whatever that impulse is that I feel that I'm inspired by to write the song, whatever that, wherever that came from, I try to write from that place. And I usually spend 30 to 60 minutes on it to try to build out you know from the chorus try to build out the rest of the ideas but i don't i'm not a big like this is my first draft then let me come back this is my second and my fourth or fifth like by then it's like i don't like yeah by then the critic has taken over and it's like nothing sounds good and it's just so I, yeah that that's kind of my approach to it um but i also know everybody has their own way and i think it's a matter of kind of figuring out what what's best for you hmm hmm well, with that in mind, I think we should, I was going to say we could listen to Everlasting Love, but um, given the nature of the uh, time constraints that we have, maybe it'd be better to switch to a live performance. What do you think? You want to play something? Sounds great. Yes. Okay. So the piece that we were chatting about, I think you said you were going to play mine, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this was something that um, I was just introduced to because it was featured in a collection of um, weddings or something like this uh, that happened over the pandemic. They were like virtual weddings or smaller ceremonies or whatever. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about this song and the background of the, how it kind of spread around the country and that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, so this was the very first song that I wrote about my wife. I, we, we met on, on a dating app on OkCupid. This is not sponsored. I don't get make any money from it. <laughs> Um, but, uh, 
we met and we were just messaging and it was it was during that period when I was writing songs for the album and I was just trying to churn out a bunch of songs and it was literally like three days into knowing her when I just you know just felt really strongly so that's how that came about and then while we were having our virtual wedding last summer we were thinking about a music video for the song and I was like so someone mentioned the idea of doing a compilation of the virtual wedding you know to, to kind of speak to the times that we were in and be able to make it a kind of communal effort. And so, you know, I just got on Instagram and YouTube using, you know, COVID, hashtag COVID weddings and just tracked down about 30 couples. We ended up with, um, I think people from 16 different states from like six different countries and four continents. We cover from Australia, um, India, a couple of folks in the UK. So there were you know, and they were all just on board for the idea. They sent in their videos or their pictures and um, yeah, and it ended up being a really cool kind of very time appropriate uh, music video. So yeah, that's Perfect. a song I'll yeah. be playing live. Sounds good. Uh, let me remember. <laughs> How's the sound? It's all right? All right. Can I explain my way of taking over me? I will never be the same. Because when we touch, it's like an electricity. You make me call you by another name. Wanna call you sexy lady. Wanna call you dynamite. Wanna call you baby one of a kind. Wanna call you baby girl. Wanna call you my whole world. You're everything, my lady, you're my queen. I'ma just call you mine. Mine, mine. I'ma just call you mine. Mine. Mine, I'ma just call you mine. Mine, mine, I'ma just call you mine. Mine, mine, yeah. Now, I know it's early, maybe a, a bit premature, but I can't, I can't wait to see you again. Oh no, cause your energy is finally taking over me. And now I never, never want this night to end, babe. Wanna call you sexy lady, wanna call you dynamite, wanna call you baby one of a kind, wanna call you baby girl, wanna call you my whole world, you're everything, my lady, you're my queen, I'ma just call you mine, 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 yeah, I'ma just call you mine, 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 I'ma just call you mine. Oh, oh, yeah, I'ma just call you mine, 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 so I'ma call you mine, baby girl, you're mine, yes, you are mine, oh, oh, oh. I'ma call you mine, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much man beautiful god you sound so great oh How's thank you possible? so much wow you sound so good you know it's like <laughs> one of those things where it's like the record and the live performance sound like you uh, know the resolution is perfect a lot coming coming from coming from you mitch oh okay i really appreciate you coming on and yeah, uh sharing your music with us and um hopefully you'll get a few more um, people checking out your music, of course, and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. something that was evident to me in listening to music is that it's just so full of joy and love and, and humor and positivity. I hope that you know people will will find that to be the same and and uh, and take that forward and and yeah. uh, spread the word. And um, congratulations again on your on your new marriage and your new baby, of course. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's a journey, and you'll love it. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I hope to talk with you again soon and Absolutely. we hope to see you out on the road. Any plans for some tours coming up or some dates we could check out before we close? Uh, yeah. I mean, we have a few, obviously because of COVID things are crazy. Um, but we have a few lined up here in Philly. 
before the end of the year, um, just kind of locally, a couple or a couple shows. Um, and then we, yeah, we, I mean, we're definitely looking for the springtime to do some, some bigger tours and to, you know, to put some show dates together. So yeah, we might, right. we might need to see about a, a West coast situation. Definitely, definitely keeping our, 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 our calendars open. So, you know, we've got know. some venues open for you if you need oh. one. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, in the meantime, everyone, please check out Alexi online. And um, that song you just played, mine, is a video accompanying on YouTube. You can check that out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we hope to see you all again at CRC Music in the Studio. We're here just about every Friday, so come check us out. And thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right. <laughs>